Hi, I'm KC, aka Freak Monkey, and I'm going to show you a piece of computer hardware that's quite unusual. This, it looks more like a shoe shine kit, I know, as you see is a handcrafted wooden box with dovetail joints, a uh, brass buckle on it, a handle made of fine Corinthian leather, piano hinge on the back, and strangely, a uh, DB25 RS-232 port an ancient toggle switch, a uh, blind voltage input, and a fuse. So what is this, right? A wooden box with a serial port on it. If you open the handle, you will find inside a large, two large transducers with rubber cups around them, and a slot on this end. This is actually a modem. It is a Livermore Data Systems Model A modem, I don't know if you can read this, probably not. I'm going to put some better pictures of this on my website. The second oldest version of this I have found is in a computer museum in California. If you do a Google search for Livermore Data Systems, you'll come across it. That's a Model B. It's exactly like this one, but it has two lights attached to the front of it. Uh, and they date it at circa 1965. So extrapolating, this one must be either also 65 or maybe 64, somewhere right around then. At any rate, probably one of the oldest modems still in existence. This was given to me by the widow of a retired IBM engineer in the late 80s. He was a friend of mine and he passed away. And she had me help her clean out all his old stuff out of the attic. She came across this, actually I came across this, and I was enamored by it. She said, oh, you can have that. I have no idea what I would do with it. I've kept it ever since then. Today we're going to try to make it function. Okay, so here you see from left to right we have a laptop running a terminal program. I'm running it full screen text mode because that's a lot easier to see on this camera. Uh, anybody who uses Minicom will recognize the red status bar on the bottom. A vintage 1980s, maybe 1970s telephone. Our trusty Livermore Data Systems circa 1964 wooden box modem. A serial port connector, uh, RC32 cable to a DB25 adapter. Finding the telephone and the DB25 adapter were the most challenging parts of this project so far. All right, so the way these modems work, this modem predates, of course, the Hayes command set or even microcontroller-based modems. This modem is really an analog device. It creates a solid tone and it interrupts that solid tone when it receives bits from the serial port. On the, on the modulator side and on the demodulator side, it listens to a solid tone and when there are interruptions it turns those into pulses which then come back out of the serial port. There is no digital circuitry in this modem. So, you don't give it a command, you don't tell it to dial, you just hook it up and connect it to a, a, a phone that's talking to a modem on the other side and bits start coming out. So that's what we're going to attempt to do. First, you open this up and turn it on if my hacked up power cord works. Yes, and you get a solid tone here. Hear the solid tone there. Interestingly, when you connect the serial port, the solid tone changes because the voltage from the RS-232 port actually drives the oscillator. The tone changed. That proved to be an interesting challenge because the first serial adapter I tried, which was USB based, didn't put out as much voltage as a hardwired serial port, and therefore the tone that came out was the incorrect frequency and it would not talk to anything. So, now that's connected, we have a bunch of line noise on the screen because it's hearing my voice. I will let you hear this and I will hit some keys on the keyboard to hear it modulate. So, as you hear, it just simply modulates the tone, interrupts the tone when it receives bits. Pretty simple. Put the screen there from the line noise. So then the next step, we'll uh, move the camera in a little bit here, is to dial a phone number that has a modem in the other end. That also took me a little while to come up with, but thankfully my employer has an ancient Shiva terminal server still in existence. 
call that. We'll hear the familiar modem tone. There it is. Put that on here. And when that syncs, we should be presented with a login screen. There it is. I will log into this. And I will connect to a uh, Linux box that I maintain in my lab. And voila, we are on the net with a 1964 300 baud acoustic modem. As a demonstration, I'll get this in a little closer here. We can read it. No, maybe not. Let's bring up a web page. Since we're using a terminal, we will do it with. Oh, I didn't even know my terminal type. <laughs> we will do this with Lynx, which is a text based web browser. Here's the main page of Wikipedia loading at 300 baud through a acoustic modem from the 1960s. Oh yeah, baby, we're blazing now. Making connection, waiting for response, HTTP OK, there we go. Load the page, there we go, all right, so. You all remember when BBSs were this slow? Wasn't it a lot of fun? So here we are, loading Wikipedia at 300 baud through a 1960s modem. It's taken a good minute now just to load the first part of the first page. And there you have it. So, there you go. I would be very interested to hear from anybody who has another modem of this type, maybe one slightly newer, slightly older. I know there's a Model B in a computer museum in California. I saw a Model C, which is the same as this, except with a couple of knobs on it, slightly different form factor, but also in a wooden case on eBay recently. Um, I haven't seen another Model A, and I would certainly be very interested to know if there are any other modems that are older than this one. Um, because you just don't see many computer peripherals from this age that are still functional and still work. And uh, so anyway, that concludes my demonstration. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, you can email me at freakmonkey at gmail.com. That's P-H-R-E-A-K-M-O-N-K-E-Y at gmail.com. And until uh, next time.